What's up, everyone? It is Aaron McGinnis here, or as the kids on the block call me, a Aaron. Uh, very excited to be with you tonight, Wednesday night on Wednesday Night Live. Yes, it's going to be a great, fantastic night. Why are we here, you ask? Well, just... Just to recap, the number one goal for us as a ministry is to develop your faith, grow your close, grow you closer to God and to others. Uh, so we're hopefully uh, we're hoping that this is going to build you up in your faith walk while also having a lot of fun. Um, what to expect for tonight? We're going to have a little bit uh, of games. Where's Zuko? Uh, a new something new that will come up very soon, <laughs> and uh, uh, a little bit of worship as well. Um, Josh Eisenhart is going to give us another game. He's going to throw down, as they say. Do they say that? They say that. And um, we're going to get a message tonight. Uh, just a heads up: the message tonight um, is going to be about how Jesus defeats death. And I know, especially in my own life right now, that. Um, this idea of death is is a little more at the forefront than it usually is um, with what's going on around us. And I know that some of you at home listening right now, even myself included, have been uh, have seen the effects uh, of of what's been going on and have uh, and have had to think about death a little bit more than usual. And some of you have been directly affected. So I wanted to just let you know that um, I'm praying for you. We're praying for you as a ministry. There are hard things going on. But uh, if that's something that's on your mind, please stick around for the message because I think it will be an encouragement to you. Um, And 
it will help us draw closer to Christ, who is our ultimate source of comfort. So again, uh, yeah, please stick around for that message. I think I think it will be a good one to hear. Um, all right, well, we're going to get started here, uh, like we do every time, with our favorite little segment, or my favorite, or at least my cat's favorite little segment. It is time for Where's Zuko? Let's do it. All right, where is Zuko this time? Is he A, hiding behind the trash? Is he B, swinging on the screen door? Or is he C, prancing down the road? This makes me think it's going to be an outdoors one. A, B, or C, what do you think in the comments below? All right, actually not below to the side. Here we go. Let's see where is Zuko. It's a beautiful day outside here, but my question is, where is Zuko? Oh, you got Zuko! <laughs> what happened? What is he? <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> Guys, I kid you not. This cat is nuts. <laughs> we This is way back. We were trying to watch Flower City outdoors, okay? And we closed the screen door and everything. And next thing you know, cat, climb, spider cat, climbing up the screen door. I turn, door's opening, he's falling. Uh, Z Zuko is a curious one. We'll say that. Uh, what did they say about curiosity? Anyways. Um, so there you go. There's this segment of Where's Zuko? Uh, all right. We're going to move on to a new little tiny itty bitty little segment uh, called this. It's called Meme the Leader. <laughs> okay. I'm going to throw up an image of one of your leaders. Is it going to be the sixth grade leader? I don't know. 11th grade. Who knows? Um, I do. Uh, and you guys have to come up with a great meme. Give me some captions for this. Uh, I will point out who had the best caption. I'll look through them all and I'll choose. It's very subjective. I'm I'm just going to choose uh, who I think is the best for next week. But um, here we go. Meme that leader. Write a caption for... Boom. Will Nelson, look at this rad dude just chilling on the beach with his old, that's not even a, that's a boogie board, right? With his boogie board. Uh, what is a good caption for this photo? Are you going to comment on his glasses? Are you going to comment on his headband? Are you going <laughs> to, I don't know. Um, it's smooth Will Nelson, Willie Nelson on the beach. Uh, when you're... Uh, when Florida opens its beaches. I don't know. <laughs> like, what, what is your caption for this meme? I'll give you 20 more seconds. I'm going to put some, some nice soothing music so you can uh, choose or you can write during this time. Here we go. Mm. Yes, here they are. They're coming in. Will Nelson, beach dude. All right, and it's gonna end now. Okay, these are hilarious. I'm gonna go through all of these on my own time, not right now, uh, but that was Meme Your Leader. I'm excited to see, to actually look through everything you guys are putting down, because it's great. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we had a game last week. If you remember, we had some emoji song game. Uh, you know, bing, it'd come up. You guys would guess. And what we did was we took the people who uh, answered correctly and answered first for every question, and we put them into uh, a prize generator. So here we go. Um, without further ado, the winner from last week's game, the emoji song game, is... Jonathan Sulo. <laughs> Word has it that Jonathan Sulo was the first on maybe even two or three of these. So very well deserved, Jonathan. Uh, you are going to win a gift card. Uh, it's going to be a surprise, though. It's going to come in the mail, but it's at least for $10 to $15. That's all I got. Um, there you go. Great job. Y you got the break my stride question so good do you want to build a snowman and clearly you do so great job with that quick announcement coming up this friday the 24th is a family 
game night. Yes, 7 p.m. this Friday. Tune in. Um, go to browncroft.com slash family game night. What are we going to be doing? Wonderful question. We are going to be doing a one big Zoom call with a, a family trivia kahoot. You guys know it. Look up that information. Come to the game night. There are There is a prize. I'm pretty sure pizza or, or some, some food of your choice will be delivered to your house if you guys win. Uh, again, pro tip. Bring your whole family, the youngest to the oldest, because you're going to need a wide span of ages to win this thing. So family game night, April 24th. Uh, participate in our big Zoom call with your phone. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Henry? Connor? Leah? Kyra? Where are you guys? Where am I Finn? I've been waiting in the lobby for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That is astronomical. Might be Henry. I'll look harder next time. Finn! Henry? Connor! Kyra! Leah! Ava! Where are you guys? Guys, where are you? We are going to move on to our game for this week. We'll see what our main man, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, some say he sleeps with 14 pillows in his bed. <laughs> Others say that he only uh, he will only play Nintendo Wii. Not Wii U, just the normal. That's the only one he'll play. Uh, but all I know is he's the game master. Let's bring it over to Josh Eisenhart. Here we go. Good evening. It is so good to be back with you, Josh, here on Wednesday Night Live. It's on the shirt, it's official. I'm the real deal, Wednesday Night Live. Aaron, you rock. Steve Mealy, you rock. You guys don't get enough credit for what's been going on. So great to be with you. It is time for game time. We are gonna play a really, really sweet game this week and it's gonna require you to actually do a little more than just type something into the chat. You're gonna have to get back on your phone, you're gonna have to look up a few things, and you're gonna have to search for something very specific that we want you to put into the chat. So check this out. This week, this game is called Quickopedia. You know, like Wikipedia, but Quickopedia. Like Wikipedia, but fast, I guess. Uh, but here's the deal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Pick Me app to put up a weird random thing that you can find on Wikipedia and it's gonna say uh, the, the thing, whatever it is, and then it's gonna say the paragraph and the word number. And what you need to do is go to Wikipedia, find that thing, go to the correct paragraph, go to the right, correct word, and then type it right into the chat, right, is it over there? I think it's over there, maybe it's over there. I think it's over there. It's over there. I don't know where it is, but type it right into the chat right away on YouTube. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to love this game. Now, the last two weeks, I've done a couple different things. I did the random sound generator, which went awesome. Did the random image generator, which gave me nightmares because there was a, like a Ronald McDonald thing there. Didn't like that. So this week, I'm pulling out all the stops. Not just random apps that you can buy. I went onto the Amazons.coms. And I found something that I think you guys are gonna like. Check this out. This little beauty is called the Mind Reader 5000. Now, here's how this works. When I activate the Mind Reader 5000, this bad boy can pop up my exact thoughts right next to me. So, you might think, well, Josh can just sometimes ramble on and we don't even know what he's saying. Mind Reader 5000 can tell you exactly what I'm thinking at all time. Hold on, before we start this, dear Lord, please help me have all the good thoughts right now. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, love you. All right, here, so I, we don't want any bad thoughts coming in. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna activate this. There's a little click button. 
there it is. All right, so that's activated. So now when I go like, okay, random thought, boop, it's gonna pop up over there. Whatever I'm thinking at the time. And you guys don't wanna go in here. It's a weird place inside my head. But this is gonna happen while the game's going on. You guys are gonna be freaking out how cool this is. Am I right? Boop. I don't know if I'm right. The thoughts are in my head. The words come out of my mouth. I don't know what's going on. Okay, we're gonna start it. Quickopedia, get ready. We're gonna start this bad boy off this game. Remember, go find the word, the paragraph, uh, find, search the word, find the paragraph, and the word that we're looking for. You might be a little like, what's this mean? You'll figure it out right away. We're gonna start it right now. Oh, it's rolling. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to do it too. Stop! All right, go to Wikipedia, type in Balto, paragraph two, word eight. You only have 20 seconds left, hurry up. You guys got this, Balto, I know all about Balto. I've seen a movie about Balto. I, a uh, stage play about Balto. I've read the book. I have um, cooked recipes that Balto himself has made. I don't know what we're talking about, but right now, Balto, paragraph two, word A, what is it? It should be filling up the YouTube chat right now. I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds, hurry up. Type in Balto to Wikipedia. Paragraph two, word A, three, two, one, stop, okay, whoever was first, this is what we're doing for this game, whoever was first wins. It's not just everybody who gets it right, because I know how you guys play, right? I know how you guys play. Oh, I'll wait for somebody else to do it, then I'll just copy them. They might be wrong. You ever think about that? Random thought. Is it reading my mind? I can't tell if this is working. This might be really awkward. It might not be working for you guys uh, over there. All right, so here's what we got. Balto, awesome. Next one, here we go. There's only a couple of these this week because we got to keep it moving. It's Quickipedia, not Wikipedia, Quickipedia. All right, and stop it, 30 second, type in Cosmic Latte into Wikipedia. Paragraph one, word six, what is it? Who's got the fastest fingers in the West? Who is rocking this game so hard right now? Oh man, I can't wait to figure out what Aaron's gonna give out for a prize this week. He gives out some pretty good prizes. Maybe the Mind Reader 5000. I don't know. We'll think about it. Eight seconds, five seconds. I, I have no concept of time. It's still messing with me, this whole quarantine. Three, two, one, stop. Okay, hopefully somebody got that one. We are gonna move on to the next one. You can tell me what a Cosmic Latte is. Sounds wonderful, maybe it's something you can buy me. Who knows? Mind Reader 5000, what am I thinking right now? This way? Interesting. Next, Quickopedia round three, here we go. All right, near and dear to many of your hearts, Penfield High School. Paragraph three, word nine, what is it? You only got about 25 seconds left. Hurry up, get it in, type it in, just make something up. Eagles, because it might be eagles, I don't know, or it could be the, or it could be red, or it could be smart, because everybody who goes to Penfield is super smart, obviously. I read that once in my mind reader ways that I read. All right, three, two, one. Hopefully somebody got that one. Penfield High School, paragraph three, word nine. We're moving on to the next one. Guys, we only have a couple more. Oh, I love this game so much. Love this game. Here we go. Oh, this is gonna be good. I think there's only a couple. Here we go, stop, you're gonna have 30 seconds, get ready, stop! Oh, Bulbasaur, paragraph two, word four, get to Wikipedia, find it, type it in, be a ninja, and be awesome, the champion of Wikipedia, a Bulbasaur. I know what a Bulbasaur is, they are, that's an ancient mythical being. Um, responsible, they were called the Bulbasaur because their noses were shaped like a light bulb. Uh, they were a predecessor to Rudolph. And um, I don't know, a lot of people don't know that, but I do. Okay, five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. 
We're done with that round. Bulbasaur, hopefully somebody got it. Paragraph two, word four. Here we go. Next one. There aren't that many left. I think there's only like three, maybe only two. Here we go. Stop. Snail racing. Go. 30 seconds. Paragraph four, word 22. Holy cow, that's way in there. You're gonna, it's gonna take a while to count to 22. You might need to take off your shoes for this because of the fingers and toes. Who's funnier in my head? All right, Snail Racing uh, Turbo was a documentary film. A lot of people don't know that. The film Turbo, uh, based on a true story about a snail that had the speed of a NASCAR. Um, it's just, that's a real fact. That's a real, real fact. Snail Racing, paragraph four, word 22. Who's got it? First one in gets uh, to be up for the prize this week. Five, four, three, two, one. Bam. Dunzo. That round is Dunzo. Hopefully you got it. I'm pretty sure it's Shell. Do snails have shells? I don't know. Mind Random generator of mind. What's this called? Mind Reader 5000. Mind Reader 5000. Tell me. What am I thinking right now? <clears throat> that is what I'm thinking. That's exactly right. Alright, next one. Oh, now there are definitely two. I can read them. Here we go, 30 seconds, Zuko, paragraph two, word five. We know who Zuko is, the world famous cat, owned by one senior A-A-A-A-A Ron. Uh, <laughs> Aaron's cat's name Zuko, so it probably has something to do with him. Um, it might be Calico or Furball. I don't know what this word's gonna be, but paragraph two, word five, get it in. Five, four, three, come on guys, get it in, two, one. Remember the first person in is our champion. They will be entered for a chance to win the prize. Uh, good job guys, that was almost our last one. We have one more, so it's gonna be really easy to, <laughs> to see. Oh, I guess we're done. Zuko, it was our final one. Uh, wonderful, wonderful job. The Mind Reader 5000. This thing is worth every penny. It cost me $16,000. Um, but to be fair, it's only $40. It was an extra $15,960 to get the mouse ears. But hey, I like the mouse ears. What do you What do you want? And this thing works like a charm. Check it out one last time. What am I thinking? Boop. Is that Is that what I'm? I don't know what I'm thinking, but here's what I here's what I know. Love doing games with you guys. We'll be back next week. Hopefully, we want to get you guys involved in doing some of these games. So. I hope that there are some of you out there that would like to run a game. This is Josh, live from the guest room. Back to you, Aaron. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much, Josh. Uh, can't say I knew who Dusty the Klepto Kitty was before. Although I think he might be walking behind me. Um, nor did I know how old Penfield High School was. So I guess the more you know, right? Um, awesome. We are going to transition into a time of worship. Uh, again, we're going to do this a little differently this week. I'm going to actually play worship for us tonight. Um, I'm going to play a song and then we're going to go into the message for the night. Um, this first song that we're going to play is an older song. You... Uh, all you seniors, you probably know this very well. Um, maybe some of you sixth graders, maybe not as much. Um, but I encourage you to to really think about what this says. There's some strange language in here. It's called Jesus Paid It All. Um, but basically, this song is about how um, our whole life uh, is found in Jesus. It says, uh, child of weakness, we are weak. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. So during this time, I'm sure a ton of you are experiencing what it's like to have sports taken away. And, you know, this was your season that you were going to, you know, make the state championship, or this is the season where you were going to uh, be the starter, or maybe you had a, a really significant play coming up um, and you were going to be a leader. You're trying to get a role and, and all these things, maybe even academics, same thing. And all these things are kind of, have kind of been stripped away from you. And I know when I was your age, that was really tough, whether I got an injury and wasn't able to play sports for me or, or, or whatever it may be, 
getting those things taken from you is really tough because they're a part of us, right? But what this song is saying is that we should find our all, our all in all, our all of our being in Jesus alone. So when those things are taken away from you, when trips that you're supposed to go on are taken away, when friends you're supposed to see are taken away, sports, uh, whatever it may be, when those things are taken away, we still have Jesus and he is always there, unshakable. Um, so that that's what this song is about. It, it's praising our God who, um, who was and is and is to come, who is eternal. So let's sing uh, Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness watch and Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow.
Would you bow and pray with me? Uh, dear Lord, uh, we pray during this time, during this time of uncertainty and not knowing uh, what's ahead, uh, we pray that we can find all of ourselves in you. Uh, we recognize that uh, you are the one who paid our debts. Um, gosh, Lord, you paid it all for us. You gave yourself just to be with us. And to be with us during times like this when it's scary, uh, when there's uh, things going on, uh, things canceled, everything is kind of not going the way we thought it would be three months ago, right? Um, God, let us find ourselves in you. Be our comfort during this time. Thank you for what you did on the cross and in your resurrection that allowed you to be with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome, guys. Well, we're going to go straight into the message. Um, and this is the message for today. It, it, you know, two weeks ago, it was Jesus defeated separation. Uh, last week, it was Jesus defeated sin. We learned about sin and missing the mark, how we fail to love God and love others. But Jesus uh, paid the ultimate price and took away our sin. He defeated sin. And, and today we're talking about uh, maybe the biggest the biggest, uh, what is it, weapon the devil, the, the, the enemy has against us, and that's death, how Jesus defeated death. Um, I know for me, uh, when I was growing up, it was very sad when things ended. I remember the first time really feeling this was I had to move in eighth grade, dead center of eighth grade, from a school I had gone to since I was, you know, in kindergarten. I had made so many friends. I uh, played on the sports teams with all of these guys, been over to their, it, I just had a really good friendship with all these guys. And I had to move in eighth grade away. And, and that, that season of my life ended and it was very sad. Um, I know in college when I had to graduate, I knew that that was the end of, uh, college for me, all those friendships, uh, the end of sports for me, competitive sports. And that was a big deal in my life. And even when, when I moved away to Virginia, for those of you who didn't know, I, I was there for three years and I moved back to Rochester and I had to kind of say goodbye to that chapter of my life. Those friends in Virginia, the job, the, the Blue Ridge mountains, right? I had to see that end. And when things end, it's super sad. I mean, uh, you guys have felt this right now. School has ended, which at first was something to rejoice over, but it's getting to that point where, you know, it's kind of, it's sad that it's ended, especially for you seniors out there or, or you know, those graduate. It's a sad time, but possibly the most sad uh, ending um, that, that we experience or know of is the ending of life, of death. Death is very sad. And some of us um, have, uh, you know, we think about death and it brings us a lot of anxiety. Some of us think about it and we're honestly very confused. What happens? I, I don't quite understand. Uh, some of us just pretend and, and, and don't think about it at all. Um, for me, I know I was that way. In in eighth grade, I had an aunt pass away, which was really hard, but I decided just to not think about it. I let it pass over me. I never cried. I just, I just decided not to think about it. I even had a, a grand, a great grandma pass away. Same thing. Um, and it, it wasn't until college when I actually sat and thought about death, and I got, I was terrified. I still remember where I was sitting the first time when I thought about what death really is, and I got terrified. Um, and, and we see in the Bible that Jesus doesn't gloss over death, right? He sees his friend Lazarus uh, pass away and he weeps. He, it is sad. The end of life is a sad thing and it can be very scary. But what if I told you that there is another way to think about death? One that doesn't make you scared and anxious, but actually brings comfort, um, a, a way that actually brings a sense of even confidence, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense unless you know the story of Jesus 
Christ. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the Christian faith, Jesus, a real person who never failed to love God, never failed to love others, he was uh, put on a cross and sacrificed for our sins. Jesus died and was buried. And then he did something that no one was really expecting. He ro- he was raised to life. He defeated death in that way. And that changed everything. Um, now, because of Jesus, because of uh, the story that we read here from, uh, you know, hundreds of people that saw him after this, because Jesus rose from the dead, we now have hope that death does not have the final say, that death is actually not the last chapter in the book. You know, in the book of our lives, death is not the ending. And that should bring you confidence and comfort. But don't take my word for it. Um, If you have your Bible, go ahead and open to 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. I'm going to also flip there with you. My Bible's upside down. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 15, um, near the back of your Bible. There we go. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57, 54. There it is. Okay. First Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. And remember, um, we are talking about how death is not the final chapter in our story. And and we didn't really know that until the life of Jesus, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And this is how we can have confidence. So let's read from 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. It says this, When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, perishable meaning something that can die, imperishable meaning something that can't. So us and Jesus, we, we can die, Jesus raised to life. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, an easier way to say it, the mortal with immortality, something mortal has been clothed with immortality, then saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory, where, O death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What is this saying? This is saying um, that us, me, you, uh, who fail, remember that, uh, that target analogy? We fail to love others and fail to love God. We miss the mark. Um, we, in our, in our own power, if we were just left to ourselves, death would be the end to uh, the story in our life. It would be the last chapter. But because of Jesus who died and was in rose from the grave, who never failed to love God and love others because he rose to life. And now we are clothed with his righteousness. Um, us mortals, uh, are now clothed with the righteousness and the resurrection of Christ. So death is not the last chapter in our lives. So what does this mean for you guys? It means this. When you are thinking about, uh, there's lots of things going on in your life. Right now, currently, my grandma had been just diagnosed with cancer. Very, it's not good, right? Um, But I know that she loves Christ. She still is devoted to him, following him. She prays every morning, evening, night. She, her joy is not taken away. But I know that when her time comes to pass away, when death comes to her doorstep, that's not the end of her story, right? Because what we see, what we know from Christ rising from the dead and even bringing Lazarus up from the dead, we know that Christ defeated death. And he promises to us that his, uh, the way he defeated death is now granted to us who believe in him. So I know for my grandma, this is not the final sto- uh, chapter in her life. And some of us uh, have been touched by death in tough, tough, tough ways. People going too soon, too young uh, in ways that are just 
just sad. Um, but we know that that's not the final chapter in their life. Even though the devil wants us to think this is it, this is the scariest thing. Jesus says, hey, the scariest thing, devil, that you got on us, I defeated it, right? The, the biggest weapon you have, gone, because I proved that death is defeated through my resurrection. Um, that's what it means for us today. I want to actually play a song for you. This is, no joke, in my top three favorite songs of all time. I'm just going to play the end of it. It's a song called Deathbed by Reliant K. Some of you may know their song, Sadie Hawkins Dance. But uh, they're a band, uh, a Christian band, and they wrote a song called Deathbed. And I'm going to give you a little context here. It's a song about a guy who goes through his life kind of messes up a lot, right? He has some troubles and he comes to the end of his life uh, and he's on his deathbed and he's scared, but um, he has an encounter with God. So let's listen to it and just uh, take in what it means in light of saying that death is not the end of our story. All right, let's listen. But this is my deathbed The cancer in my lungs is killing me now And I've given up hope on the days I have left But I cling to the hope of my life in the next Then Jesus showed up, said before we go I thought that we might reminisce See one night in your life when you turned out the lights You asked for and prayed for my forgiveness You cried wolf, the tears they soaked your fur The blood dripped from your fangs You said, what have I done? You loved that lamb with every sinful bone And there you wept alone Your heart was so contrite You said, Jesus, please forgive me of my crimes. Sanctify this withered heart of mine. Stay with me until my life is through. On that day, please take me home with you. Follow me and take my hand And I am the truth Embrace me and you'll understand And I am the light And through me you'll live again For I What's so powerful about that song is that it kind of shows the perspective of, <laughs> of God's perspective perspective of when we are at the end, right? When something's going to come to an end. Is it scary? No. Is this person anxious? Maybe. But God says, I am with you. Even in this thing that is maybe the most awful thing that could happen to a human, uh, death. Even when that's happening, God is saying, I am with you and I will always be with you. In fact, you will never be lonely again. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, that is the comfort that we have in Christ. In fact, I have, I'm going to read to you guys my favorite verse of all time. It's one I highly recommend you memorize. Um, I'm going to, it's Romans 8. 38 and 39. I'm actually going to read uh, Romans 8, 37. I wasn't planning on this, but it just seems appropriate. So it says this, it says, uh, this starting in verse 38, uh, Romans 8, 35, it says, 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? What can separate us from Christ's love? Is it hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And then here it comes. This is what I want you to listen to. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ Jesus and the love of God, not even death. Death is not the final chapter in your story. For those who are in Christ, there is nothing that can separate you from his love. Why? Because of this, because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus alone that that is the case. Ah, all right. We're going to end on a, on a song here. So um, this one is called Christ is Risen. Uh, we heard Jeremy sing it not too long ago. Um, and, and it's just a great recap about how death you know, the devil's greatest power, his, his super, <laughs> his super punch. I don't know. The, his greatest weapon is useless because of what Christ did. And this is just praising the name of God for doing such an amazing thing and making his love available to us, saying that he will be with us even after death. So um, let's sing along. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Sinner now a saint For the God who died Came back to life And everything has changed Hallelujah Christ is risen From the grave Hallelujah Christ is risen From the grave Oh death where is your sin Oh, fear, where is your power? The mighty King of Kings has disarmed you, delivered and redeemed. Eternal life is ours. Oh, praise His name forever. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. sweet embrace I'll see your scars your open arms the beauty of your face through tears of joy I'll lift my voice in everlasting praise
your sing, oh fear, where is your power? The mighty King of Kings has disarmed you, delivered and redeemed, eternal life is ours, oh praise His name forever. death has no grip on us. Not even death can separate us from your love. Uh, I pray that as we see those we love um, around us, you know, face death as it's scary, it's tough, it's sad, but I pray that we can uh, rest in knowing that, that you are drawing near to them, that you will never let them be alone again. That we would just give our lives all to you, and knowing that only through you that this is made possible. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, awesome guys. Uh, uh, yeah, it's time to go to small groups. Um, for those of you who may have not been in a small group yet. Uh, feel free to put something in the chat or message our YouTube or even email me at Aaron at browncroft.org and I can shoot you the link for your uh, for your small group. Uh, yes. So um, other than that, I'm going to pass it over to one of our leaders, uh, a great leader, a really good one, um, to send us into small groups. Remember, message us if you don't have the link and uh, we'll be able to get that to you. All right. Have a great one. Oh, hey guys! I was just sitting here enjoying my quarantine activity. Do you like it? I've loved it. I'm so excited for small groups tonight. I'm the sixth grade girls small group leader and I love small groups because I get to catch up with my girls and hear how they're doing. If this is your first time, make sure you reach out in the chat so you can join your small group too. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.